Guys, I've got a treat. Oh? I have got the Italian band from the rugby on Saturday, and they've agreed to, to play us in with the theme tune. So, <laughs> la- gentlemen, in three, two, one. Hello, Egg Chasers. It's the Egg Chasers Rugby Podcast, the podcast about rugby that doesn't take itself or the game too seriously. Back in the rugby dungeon to talk about Six Nations Round 3, which finished today with France against Scotland. And we've got England travelling to Wales and Ireland travelling to Italy to talk about um, that anthem. Let's just start there briefly. Hello, Phil. Hello, Tim. Hello, JB. Hello, Tim. Wasn't that nice of the Italian band to play for? It was. I mean, they could learn a thing or two about tempo, couldn't they? (laughs) Uh, Do you think that was mind games or was that just... Because the the sight of Craig Casey cracking up, um, what's the the, the cameraman's panning across the players and Craig Casey just laughing his head off because the team have finished and they're only halfway through? (laughs) Oh, I don't know. I didn't even see it. Oh, you didn't see that? No, I watched the Ireland game. So there was there was a, some strange tempo in the anthem. I wondered at first if it was the sound from the feed wasn't matching the pictures because yeah, it was so it out was of time, way out of time. Yeah. So they the, the Irish players were singing Ireland, Ireland, and they were they were still only halfway through the first <laughs> verse. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! So it sort of took the uh, the energy and, and what should have been a gap. Like remember Peter Armani's face last week in Dublin before the France game it looked mm. like he was ready to go and kill someone, and uh, and then, then it flipped to Craig Casey just laughing his head off. I mean James Ryan still looked pretty. Uh, he, oh, did he have a tear in his eye or almost had a tear in his eye? Yeah, captain in the side. Yeah, he had a tear in his eye. He was like, "You've ruined this special one before." <laughs> Cheers, <me."> lads. <laughs> Uh, we've got lots to talk about. Um, we are. Uh, you can contact us on email, and I will pepper the podcast with emails. Contact TedChasers at gmail dot com. We'll have another podcast in your feed, which is talking about domestic rugby and all uh, sorts of stuff going on uh, around the game. And there is lots to talk about. Yeah. But in terms of the the international rugby, JB is delighted we're starting with the international rugby. Can't right? wait! I'm really really excited about it. Um, I, I my rugby knowledge this week has gone through the roof. And do you know why? I've just realised I haven't downloaded the Ultimate Rugby app on my phone. <laughs> so all my knowledge is up to date. The players play in the right position. Have you got a new phone or something? Yeah, I dropped my old. Um, I, I lost a phone in Dubai. Shock horror. Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently, a country where phones always come back. Well, mine didn't. Uh, and then my new phone, which I bought in Dubai Airport, I dropped in my bilge. That's right, I have a bilge. So, Sorry, um, what's a bilge? What's a bilge? I don't know what a bilge is. Don't, don't know what a bilge is. No, what's a bilge? A bilge is uh, the bottom bit of a boat which uh, holds all the, holds the water which seeps in. Ah. So you'd have a bilge pump, wouldn't That's you? That's correct. Look at you, you're all nautical. Well, I, I just know the phrase bilge pump, but I don't really know where, why I know that yeah. phrase. So I, I had a bilge pump that failed and my boat started filling up with water. Uh, so my bilge is relatively full. And then when I was t- uh, tinkering around with my engines the other day, the phone fell out and I just could not find it. So anyway, I eventually found it after a, a long while. But it's broken, so I've got a new phone and it doesn't have the Ultimate Rugby app on, which means I know everything about rugby. Tribe. Now. Phil is right. Phil put me onto Tribe and I've got that and it's really genuinely very good. Is it? The, you, you, the only careful, you have to be careful about the notifications if you're trying not to find out the result. Yes. The only thing I'd say, though, is I do think that Brian O'Driscoll isn't... He was struggling for cash, and I want to support him in any way I can. <laughs> I think he might. I don't know if he's actually involved in um, what write, writing the team sheets in Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not with that. I think he may have exited uh, as a business. No, uh, really, uh, uh, entity in Ultimate Rugby. So that's why it's gone downhill. That's why it's gone downhill. Oh, yeah, exactly obviously. right. Exactly. Well, no, I, I I buy it because I'm supporting Brian, Brian O'Driscoll. <laughs> um, does he? I wonder if he's got an only only fans page. If you want to support him. Yeah, maybe some tasteful shots of his feet. Something well, no, like just that. just I think he he's now got um he's gone he's gone for the intellectual look on he has, fans. It doesn't really matter how intellectual he looks; he's still absolutely stacked. Well, he was three years ago when we met him. No, yeah, he's, he's in great nick. He does still look in well, good. Well, you've probably seen him more recently than we have. Yeah, he's, I saw him the other week at Exeter. He's in great nick. He is, isn't he? He yeah. was very impressive when we saw him. Yeah. The, probably more impressive though. Who was the absolute hunk that we met? The Irish guy who did the work Oh, David us. Wallace. Unbelievable. Oh, my man. word. He's uh, so man, man crush on that guy. He's amazing. I, I mean, how old must David Wallace be now? Like, Actually, let's not talk about David Wallace. People have not... Cho- he, might, he must be... 50. I, I reckon he's 50. 
Easily 50. And, Unbelievable. And he is just a, da- a devilishly handsome man. Yeah. And in uh, he's great 40, shape. He's 46. 46. So not oh, quite wow. So he, he does. He looks tremendous. He, yeah. I'm pretty sure people haven't downloaded it. For no, I've worked with him in Munster and... a few times. Uh, yeah, no, I think people come to the podcast for yeah, this, exactly for this stuff. Do. Of course they do. If it's interesting to us, it's interesting to them. Yeah. Absolutely. I think and pre- that's international uh, it's rugby It's international rugby. Well. He's a British and Irish lion and I, I, Ireland legend. And an incredibly handsome man. Very handsome. Uh, yes. So... Uh, <laughs> We talked about this weekend being programmed really well, as in we had the nice little aperitif of Ireland travelling to Italy, the starter of England travelling to Wales, and then the main course for, as a Sunday roast with France, Scotland. But where would you like to begin? What what call, would you like to do it in that order? Should we do it chronologically, yeah, or go- we're starting with what would ordinarily be a lesser game, and it is a lesser game, but was a was still a very entertaining game, really fun match. And it, it was an interesting game because it was only really right at the last that Ireland kind of definitively won it, even though they always looked like they had um, enough to go. It was only when that Mac Hansen second try with less than 10 minutes on the clock um, that it was, right, this is actually now finally, finally over. So I only really have one thing to contribute to this conversation because I was... Involved in serious business. You were playing for TOC? Exactly right. Which we'll cover on the other pod, oh, the domestic indeed. In pod. detail, in detail. Um, but I would just point out this, that Ireland did win, and I think it might be one of the first times that Italy have taken to the field with superior halfbacks. Because I would say that mm. uh, Varney and Garbisi are probably slightly superior to Casey and Byrne. Yeah. Which is very unusual mm. for you know, Italy to be in that situation. Particularly considering like some of the pairings that they've put out in the past... Um, Kelly Haimona. Uh, Hi- 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 uh, Hi- uh, was he ever paired with a Bergamasco? Burger well, that's exactly what I was thinking. That'd be one hell of a pairing, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> that is a crash ball nine and ten. Yeah. Uh, and then also, I thought the Irish, the Irish centres, at least on paper, I don't know how they played in real life, on paper they seemed a little bit one-dimensional. Direct. I don't think McCloskey had his best game. Um... Aki was Aki was very good and bad. Yeah, he did some very nice stuff. Don't blame him for because he's and a few shaky yeah. things. Late notice, he was shunted to thirteen, and I, I've I've said this recently, and I think this game showed to me. I know Robbie Henshaw can play thirteen, and he's actually played for the Lions at thirteen, and he's very good there. Mm. But no, nevertheless, I think Gary Ringrose is Ireland's most important player. He is, and he's such a good player. As well. He's he, so he's good. such a tricky position. Yeah, Hen- Henshaw could do a job there. Um, James Hume is the one that James Hume is an I really, really like. Yeah. Obviously, rate him as an Ulsterman. Um, sadly, unavailable. But I think yeah, they did a, all right. That's a good shout, enough. actually. Why is he not available? Is he injured? Uh, I, don't, I don't actually know what the situation was. I think he was in the squad, but he might not have travelled. And then um, Ringrose was a relatively late pullout, wasn't he? Yeah. Which meant McCloskey came in and Aki moved out. So it might be that just that he wasn't travelling. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, I, th- I think that 9 and 10, that, that's cemented to me. So Craig Casey's been getting a bit of time for Munster at starting. Mm-hmm. But I think that what yesterday did is it was... it was. Well, firstly, my thought after the game was, imagine if all of the changes that a lot of Ireland fans were clamouring for, if Andy Farrell had done all of them, they could well have walked away with a defeat. Because Italy are a, a good side. Yeah, they're not to be taken lightly. No, they're not. So it, it was probably just the right amount of changes. And won more than they wanted to without Gary Ringrose. And uh, and so they've now, in a proper test match, seen that absolutely Craig Casey is the number three scrum half, if there was any doubt. And Ross Byrne is a, is a step down, but a, quite a significant step down from Johnny Sexton, if there was any doubt. Yes, and it is a bit of a, it is a, bit of a drop-off. Like Byrne is OK. I mean, he's... He was good last week against France for half an hour, yeah. or two weeks ago. Yeah, it's, it, it, and he's okay at a specific type of game plan. And actually, it's, it's a very good point. He played really well in that last half an hour against France. But they played a very specific and uh, type of game plan that really suited him. We'll come on to that game plan later because I think Scotland employed it at times uh, this week. But I think I was watching this game thinking, if I had to uh, create an equivalent in the English Premiership or... Um, an English fly half equivalent of Ross Byrne, who would it be? And the best that I could come up with is 
uh, whose name has just escaped my brain. Um, former Northampton went to the Ospreys. Uh, Stephen Myler. Myler, yeah. Very high, cr- high praise indeed, by the way. <laughs> high pra- it, it is high praise. <coughs> but at international level, do you want a little bit more than Myler? Um, you could do a lot worse. You, uh, look, uh, you could do worse. Yeah. And, and Byrne has won Champions Cups and uh, URC or whatever it's called throughout his history. And Six Nations. And Six Nations. He is a good player. So just on Burn, I've had some thoughts this week about Sexton. Mm. So Sexton is, well, there's obviously been a huge cost to keeping Sexton as he is. I read somewhere that he's not played an away game in the pro, whatever it is, or the URC. since like 2019 or something ridiculous. Like it's 2016 was the, the 2016 the, the, the was it stat that we got shared and this season he's played front of the podcast five games you can count on one hand the games he's played for Leinster this year yeah so I uh, don't well, think that was just that stat it meant that it may be completely false but. so I don't think that he's there for free unless you can unless you, can you uh, confirm that he gets paid he gets paid he, quite a lot I, I, I would imagine he gets paid significantly he very, definitely very gets handsomely. paid because didn't he. I think they match when he came back from yeah. Racing. They match what he was earning out. And there. Do, do you know what else? Like, I, I love the, the the tax break the Irish players get if they play for ten years. People get very annoyed with us for saying this. Like, if we get it wrong, and then they sort of fact check us, and then it's like fact check true but false anyway. Yeah, it, what is it again? If you play for ten years, if you if you have ten years oh, of service yeah. in Ireland, you get some cultural significance thing. Isn't you it? get an average salary, uh, or you, you get like. A I don't know, it seems to be your tax, though, isn't it? You get, like, an average of your salary for those years in one lump sum tax-free. So, like, Johnny Sexton will get, I don't know, £400,000. Good for him. Tax-free and good for him. Why not? Good for him. So so it was friend of the pod, Kirk, 1st of October 2016, if this fact is true. The last last URC away game. Last time Sexton played a regular season, so not knockout, would be URC Pro 14, Pro 12, Rainbow Cup, blah, blah, blah. Rab- Rabo Pro 12. Rabo Direct. Pro 16, <laughs> was it at one point? Game for Leinster outside of Ireland. Outside wow, of Ireland. that's incredible. What, what, so, was, it, what so, was it called when you used to do your weekly update of that Briefing. Week? No, no, no. No, what was it called? On, on the pod, you used to have a, you had a, a little, jingle. You had a jingle and everything. Oh, when the, where is that? Was that uh, your Rabo Pro 12 Rabo update? Rabo update, not <laughs> featuring Aroni, not featuring Borders, or Celtic Warriors. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, we should bring on, that back. On no, old, we shouldn't. On an old phone, that was, um, it was... It was saved on an old phone of mine, so that if I ever played, like, a voice note or something, so like, non-music, outside of, like, the app it was main, meant to, it defaulted to the next thing that played was that. Brilliant. This is, this is about six or seven <laughs> years ago. Yeah, the... Uh, th- wish I, I wish every phone had that feature, actually. Yeah, it should do. So, Johnny Sexton's getting paid a lot of money. Yep. Yes, correct. He's 36. 37. 37. 37, right? And I just think, what is the cost of having him there? Because it's not just the monetary cost. Leinster have got how many... It's not like four fly halves sitting behind him who need game time. Now, they do get game time, but then when Johnny Sexton comes back, it's all about Johnny Sexton. I, I don't think it's actually... A particularly good system. Now, someone's going to say to me, "Oh, well, hang on, JB. He's like a top three fly half in the world still." It, I mean, he probably is actually. But then, are we really saying that if he vanished from the scene five years ago, no one would have taken up that mantle, or that no one in the Irish system is that good? Because I think it stifles the development well, of all the other players. There, there, there was a player who <laughs> would have taken Englishman. up that mantle, but, the, he, but we found out he's born in Birmingham. Birmingham, so. Birmingham yeah. yeah, ineligible. Yeah. All those caps taken back. Uh, I, well, I, th- I actually think there's two players. So I, I think, I think both Paddy Jackson and I remember. I remember about 2015 or 16 saying that I thought that Paddy Jackson was putting real pressure as a proud Ulsterman, saying that Paddy Jackson was putting real pressure on Johnny Sexton at that point in time. And I can't remember. I, th- I think there was some laughs and some like not taking that seriously. But I, I still think had he have stayed, he would have put yeah. real pressure for. Reasons that we don't need to go into. He's playing in London, uh, London Irish, and is ineligible. Uh, the other player is Joey Carberry, mm. who for horrific injuries, uh, he's not the player he was. Like every time I've seen him, I've wanted him to be that player, and I just don't think he is, and I don't think he'll ever get back to being the player he was because he was such a like, flowing runner, such an like, gliding runner. He could have been. 
But it's an interesting point, the, the opportunity cost, Jay, because mm. I guess Sexton's, it's not like he's prevented players coming through. Because, like, Ross Byrne has come through and Harry Byrne and Madigan came through. and I, You've had this constant um, opportunity at Leinster for players to play in big games and they've just not quite had the talent to step up at the same degree. Now, one of the guys who are, people are getting excited about, it might be too early, Prendergast. Yes. Sam Prendergast, who's, who's played for Ireland under-20s, uh, played this weekend... The only thing I, I've seen a lot of some positive reviews of him. The only thing I've actually seen of him from this weekend was a. Have you seen his fifty twenty two? No, I have not. That was a twenty two twenty two. Wow, Love that's, it. that's useful to have in the locker. Was a spiral kick as well, and apparently he he he, he kind of likes the spiral kick. So if he's bringing that back, I am a hundred percent. Yeah, behind I'm on board. Prendergast. I'm on board the Prendergast hype train. Prendergast for twenty twenty seven. Yeah, so, you know, just if Johnny Sexton wasn't there, they wouldn't be super dependent on one guy. They wouldn't have this one chink in the... Because when Johnny Sexton's not, yeah, not there, they, they seem also to like, wouldn't. They also wouldn't be nearly as good a team. I think they would, and this is the difference, right? I think they would, because somebody would have stepped up. You know, every time there's a golden generation or a golden player and they disappear, they, they do get replaced relatively quickly. You've seen it all... I mean, how quickly did it take Ireland to get over O'Driscoll and... Uh, O'Gara and Stringer and that so-called golden generation like instantly in fact the, the only one which was never really replaced was England's World Cup winning team and that I think was a little bit of the Sexton thing when they kept them for so long that no one was yeah. there to step into their shoes here is what I would say is the difference there and where I'd push back at you a little bit I, I totally understand the point you're making and I think what you, what, you, what you said is absolutely right the difference is the team that O'Driscoll was in and O'Connell and those guys they were teams that got to a World Cup quarterfinal and then got absolutely panned. They did get panned. Mm. And and, <laughs> and th- this is a team where if they get to a World Cup quarterfinal and they get panned and get panned, <laughs> it will it will be an absolute abject failure, complete and utter disaster. Yeah. Whereas in 2019 losing to New Zealand was kind of expected. Yeah. And you know, you don't even need, do you? You don't even need the guy to replace Sexton to be as good as Sexton. You might play differently. You might have a new emphasis in your game. You, you, you know, there might be um, more pressure on the 12 to do a bit more distribution or 13 or play off the night. There's all sorts of different things that, that can happen when you don't have Johnny Sexton. Andy costs you 400k or 600k. Million, right? yeah. the Whatever cost it is, is, he's costing you a lot of money. Yeah, although the cost is... I think the cost is less important to Leinster because of the way they're set up. Yeah. I've seen some sort of their, their whole setup is £30 million. Pounds. Now, that oh, is more than, that's more than just... I, it, might, it might not be true. Well, th- presumably 30 million euros, but that's that's basically 30 million yeah. pounds anyway. Um, but that that would be the whole budget for everything, not just playing squad. But I just... Money is less important to Leinster. But I do... I get the point. Actually, the biggest point is probably Ireland. Like, would you... It's the trade-off. Would Ireland be on the, the run there now without Sexton? I don't know. Possibly, yeah. possibly not. Would anyone have stepped up more than they've already had the opportunity? Would any of those players have stepped up to be this better than they are now with if they had got an extra 20, 30 um, island caps? Maybe. Would, Would they have stepped up to be as good as Johnny Sexton still is now at 37? Maybe not. Who knows? But if one of Johnny Sexton's very old hamstrings go <laughs> just before a quarter final <laughs> and then they get thrown into absolute panic because this one cornerstone of their team yeah, yeah. which have wrapped up in cotton wool for 10 years but d- fails at one point of failure I do, I do kind of feel like we've been here before as well with, yeah. with Ireland like they, they extended Rory Best's career to get him to the last World Cup to captain the team for the last World Cup and it ended in abject failure uh, it, it, they failed on the scheme of things they failed I mean yeah. 12 months before the last World Cup they were the best team in the world they were picking up all of the accolades at when we were all in, in Monaco. Yeah, they were, weren't they? They crashed and burned. Yep. It could happen again. They crashed and Ross burned. Um, <laughs> I did, on that crashing and burning, I did, I was looking at uh, Farrell and Mike Cat, and then thinking, well, Stuart Lancaster and Graham Roundtree are also involved in I Like, the whole team that caused the... Yeah, we're involved, let's not say caused, we're involved in the absolute disaster what they England, England, yeah. England I'd love to know the names World it did. yeah Lancaster Roundtree Farrell Cat they're, right. all, they're all they're plotting all plotting Ireland's dip- Ireland they don't want Ireland to go out in the quarterfinals they don't want them to make it out of the group stage yeah 
No, they do not, do they? Yeah, that's it. There we go. I, I tell you, um, I've completely <laughs> brain farted what I was going to say, in fact. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. I'll just go, just jumping back to Ireland's performance. Yes. Um, I also think... Well, no, that's that's my point. I think, actually, what, Ireland can cope with people dropping out. They've demonstrated in this competition they can cope with people yeah. dropping out, even people like Johnny Sexton, because, and I think this is to Andy Farrell's credit and and Mike Catt and, and the rest of the team there, they've they've got a, a system which people can slot in and out of. And, it, I mean, obviously you're going to have drop-offs in individual positions, and I think Jack Conan at number eight was a was a drop off from Peter Armani and Caelan Doris in the back row. Jack Conan looks sort of like a blunt instrument a little bit. Yeah. Whereas well, it was Lion two years ago. Yeah, not, I know Lion not, two not even two years ago. Exactly. But that's actually to Ireland's credit and I think they are able to withstand it, which which should give them confidence with the World Cup because this team are all on the same page. It's great. And I, I think that's a really good point. Like the the players that they're missing, you would have said a few years ago, were you missing I don't know, six or seven first choice Starters: Furlong, Omani, Henshaw, Byrne, Ringrose, Sheehan, Ringrose. From the starting lineup, this is yeah Sexton. So seven of like yeah first choice, first, and, and they, they are legit first yeah. choice as well. They they all play if they're fit. They all seven play. that would be in a in a Lions squad, and probably five mm. of them would be would start and for it, the Lions. And they they were missing half of those against France, yeah, uh, two weeks ago, and comfortably beat France, missing. All of them this week, and put, oh, yeah. put a, they, yeah, they Gibson, got a Gibson, Gibson Park as well. I mentioned, so they, yeah, so they're, they're starting Park. nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. We're not there. Yes. Uh, eight, nine. Well, uh, eight, eight, eight was on the flank. Yeah, so, yeah. but eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen were different from what they would if there was a World yeah. Cup final and everyone was available. Eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. Uh, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, yeah would be totally, yeah, yeah. would be completely different. And the, the players played played very well. Yep, uh, and. Against a good Italy team, and I, th- I feel uh, Italy are kind of valiant losers, gallant losers, but there's got to be a point where they flip from just being gallant losers, gallant, gallant or valiant losers, or gallant, and, gallant or, yeah. or valiant, valiant losers, <laughs> if I can say it right and not confuse myself, to actually winning something. Because I really do believe, actually, that this Italy team has the talent and the coaching to to worry any team. They've just got to start turning those close arm wrestle games into wins. Losing's a habit, winning's a habit. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. And they they beat they beat Wales last year. They beat Australia in the autumn. They beat they put fifty points on a very good um Samoa team last autumn. So they've got uh Scotland and Wales left, is it? Wales next, Scotland last. Mm. They could. They can definitely pick up at least one win there. I, I, yeah. I think it's a. It's a. Even though they've played very well so far, it's a negative tournament for them if they don't get at least one win. Yeah. It's a positive tournament if they get. Two, it's a very positive tournament if they get two wins, and I think they could do it. Have they ever got two wins? Yes, once. Have they? I think so. Yeah. I think they have as well. I think Ooh. the year they beat France, they also beat Wales, or Scotland. Scotland? They've beat every team apart from England. England. Well, maybe they haven't ever got two wins. I, I yeah. don't know. Oh, well, I'm not that concerned. No. <laughs> um, they've got some good stuff as well. I know there's a lot of talk about uh, Capuozzo, who had he had a quiet game by his standards. I love Bruno. I love Pierre Bruno. He's such a live wire. Uh, he, Pierre Bruno is cool, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's a very dangerous runner. He doesn't get anywhere near the credit that Capuozzo gets. But I also love like Brex. Brex is my boy. His quality Menoncello. Brex is and really Menoncello is quite a meaty midfield combo. I like that. I really like Fischetti, the loose head prop. I think yeah. he's great. Well, the, the Fischetti and the reserve um, Riccioni, the Saracens loose head prop, great. The oh, two yeah, re- replacement tight head. I sorry, think he re- replacement yeah, yeah. tight head. Yes, he is. You're quite right. The two Canone boys, yeah. the number eight rampaging through the midfield was great. Yeah. Lamaro is just a good workhorse. Neg- Negri's hard. Negri is. Did you see the picture? So there was obviously where Genj flew him, flung his body at Negri, and Negri just sat him down, which not many people do that to Alice Genj. Just ask Michael Hooper. <laughs> um, did you see the picture of Negri and Genj having a beer in the change rooms afterwards? Oh, no, I need to see He this. is way bigger than Genj. Right, can He's I just. Um, massive. So just on my second point, can I uh, mention another player? Yeah. This applies to. Uh, Sergio Parise, 
<laughs> held on to him, held on to him, oh, held on to him. They'd held on to him too long. And then, I mean, he's still playing now. In fact, he's still... Is, was he not on the bench or something? Was he... He's not played for Italy for a few years. I, he's in the squad. I don't think he is. I think he is. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Sebastian Negri's a big boy. Let's have a look. He's a big, strong boy. Yeah. You just... um. Uh, yeah, drop that shirt. They're holding up their shirts. They're but, holding up each other's shirts. So you just want to go drop the shirt so I can see see your see your rig. Yeah, he's enormous. He's absolutely he's enormous. Absolutely enormous. Yeah, I, yeah. There, there's your um, Italy squad. Is he not in the squad? No, he's not been in the squad for a few years. I heard he was in the squad. No, okay. Well, maybe he's not. Then. Do, was it Ultimate Rugby that told you it, that? What, yes, I've just was that the, it. The, <laughs> the article below Paddy Jackson Birmingham's um, favourite that was, song. That, that was from a very a very suspicious uh, emailer. <laughs> Josh Gardner at gmail.com sent that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's been in for a few years. Because he's, pl- he's still playing for Toulon. Like, he's still, uh, he's he's still, still getting still a good done. player. Anyway. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I really enjoyed the game. And yeah, I think Gallant loses it. You're right. They need to take that step, which is what, which is, and we'll come on to Scotland after the England game. But I think that's, that's where Scotland used to be, where Italy are. And Scotland have pushed on and now should be cheesed off that they lost to France. They should be, yeah, yeah. Oh, so we, yeah. we can get onto that in a little bit. Yeah, and, and Scot- it, Scotland do need to push a bit more in that direction because the thing with Scotland, we said this, we said this lots of times about, like particularly in World Cups and Six Nations, Scotland can beat just about anyone, but they can't go back to back to beat multiple teams, which is what you need to win Six Nations and or and that World wor- Cups. That World Cup pool. Whereas the island, <sighs> island can beat anyone. And can beat them multiple times, like going the autumn internationals unbeaten, winning two tests back to back on um, New Zealand soil. But also losing one. They lost the first one, yeah, they did. But two back. If Old Ireland or, or indeed Scotland um, or Italy or any of those teams, after losing that first test against New Zealand, it would have been a 3 0 whitewash to New Zealand. Yeah. So to come back from that is huge. Um, so yeah, well done, Italy, although it does feel a bit. I have a backhanded compliment until they actually start winning. Yeah, I completely agreed. Got to win. There's no point in just keep carrying, on, carrying on losing continuously. Yeah. Uh, right, so a game that I did see, Wales-England. Yes. A game which everyone's been really negative about, and I just don't really share that. So it's interesting you say that, because I've not seen any negativity, <laughs> but I've also not lot. seen very much because... I only watched this at 9 p.m. and I had I had no phone. I don't. I didn't even switch my phone on last night. I only picked up any messages this morning. Um, it's so it's such a better way to watch a game. Why? Because you, you're not influenced. Like you're saying, your first reaction to this game is lots of people are talking about negativity. Well, I'm not even yeah. aware of that negativity. I just enjoyed the game and what I took out of it. Right. Okay, yeah, I guess I guess it's fair. Yeah, keep off okay. social media. Yeah, um, I guess it's, I guess that's not a yeah. it's not a, a totally isolated to rugby point. Just yes, yeah, so social media. So I watched this at Sale FC. Did you? I did. At I watched, Haywood Road. Um, uh, yes, at Haywood Road. They are doing things right over there. It was absolutely bouncing, mm. and they were playing. Can anyone guess what which club they they, they were playing? Ooh. They not, are not, not a local derby with Sedge, obviously. It was not a it's local not, derby. It, yeah, different leagues. Uh, what about... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a clue. Their third team is currently... Chinna. Yeah, Chinna. Chinna three. Chinna were, I can oh, tell. Your fierce rivals, Tim. Yeah, Chinna three. The evil Chinna three. Evil Chinna three. So, and how did they get on? They, I believe they lost to FC. Oh, uh, obviously, we'll cover that in the domestic part. We're sorry, sorry for dragging us into domestic stuff. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so you watched it at Sale FC. Yeah, I did. Uh, watched it with some rugby luminaries. Uh, I shan't mention their names purely because, well, uh, well, the guy I watched it with likes to he likes to remain under the radar, shall we say? So we'll just leave it at that. Interesting. But of course, Nick East was there because he coaches Chinna. Oh, uh, Steve Hanley was knocking about. Um, yeah, it was quite. I, I, I bumped into. The one and only Tom Brady. Oh. A nice little chat. Was he playing? He was playing, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw, I'm sure I saw uh, Nev Edwards there. Yeah. He's killing playing. it. Absolutely killing it with his, well, not with his boy, Danny. Oh, I tell you who else played. Um, Kay Wilkinson and also James James Robbins, I think, played 12. 12. Not this makes any difference to anyone. Let's save it for the... Uh, <laughs> domestic d- pod. D- domestic pod. Yes. Say let's see beat uh, Chinna 27-17. Yeah. 
Right, all Sale FC news done. So you watching the game? Yeah, so I didn't watch it with any commentary. So Sorry, I caught the second half at FC, I caught the first half at home. Yeah. Um, I found this game utterly gripping. Um, as, as did I. I, as did, I. I was... I could not look away for the the whole 80 minutes. I found it really fascinating. Yeah. So, part of me thinks... Well, just before you go on, because yeah, sure. I, I would just say uh, there, uh, there's no question there is a lot of negativity. Yes, there is, isn't game. there? There, there? It's absolutely not imagined. So, it's, it's very interesting to hear your perspective on this. So, I wonder if the negativity... It's one of two things. I think the most likely answer is that people are tuning in to watch rugby and they just haven't really watched much rugby outside of the Six Nations and therefore they're not getting to grips with the storylines so I think the Gatlin storyline is really compelling just trying to reinvent Wales on the fly with limited time he needs to find out exactly the bits and pieces that he needs what they're like in international shirts and that's why they are going through the uh, trials and tribulations that they are meanwhile if you've not watched the premiership if you just completely switched off the premiership, you have no idea what Steve Borthwick is all about. Mm. Steve Borthwick is, is an absolute genius. So if this is like your one window into rugby, you only watch England, and you watch this performance, you probably... I'm not saying you haven't so, understood so, it. So you're, you're, you don't understand rugby enough to have enjoyed yeah. it. Is that what, what you're what saying, you're, What you're saying is, educate yourself. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying, yeah. And well, then you will enjoy it as well, much as we however, do. However, yeah, there could be another thing, which is there's a lot of people who watch Premiership. And if you watch the Premiership and the fl- uh, free-flowing, multi-score, you know, 31-30 results that we get week in, week out... Well, well like, like people saw about an hour beforehand as well. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. right. So like, if, you're a, 34, 20, if you're a Premiership junkie... Lots of tries. The, like, the pressure game of the international uh, scene, it, it does jar a bit because we all are used to seeing some fantastically competitive games now. Okay, okay. so I was in Cardiff. Yeah. Mm. And... All I will say is the the energy within the stadium just drained away. Did it? Yeah. As the game went on, and it, there, there were moments in the second half when Wales were on the attack, when it like the, the Principality Stadium, which is one of the great stadiums. It is. The atmosphere there is. It, if that place feels flat, you know there's serious problems, and that place felt flat for big chunks of that game. Mm. And it's Wales v England in Cardiff. But I, I can understand. So, as much as I found it gripping and fascinating, I wouldn't say it was always the highest caliber. Right? No. And Wales made some basic mistakes. Like the, the Wales team, you cannot fault the effort they put in, putting their bodies on the line for eighty minutes. Everyone to a man put in one hundred percent effort. Yeah, that doesn't mean they played a good, structured, coherent game plan or executed it well. And a couple of things, their exit plays repeatedly mm. were poor the line out often was poor lads lads they've got they've got a fullback that's incredible uh, under the high ball should we just kick it really long so we can't properly compete and just let him catch everything yeah I do that and they've got three men back the whole time so yeah. let's just let's put in not not low trajectory kicks let's just put in long and high kicks so at, at least one of them can get under it every single time that was just a bit dull yes I, I would agree with you there and so the quality was low overall. The there was a lot of kicking, and not all of it was good kicking. Yes, uh, in I, fact, I, a lot of it wasn't good kicking. I, I thought I thought England's kicking overall was good and was intelligent and was executed well, and the kick chase was very good. Like, there's a number of times where Halfpenny and others oh, he got, got absolutely mullered by J- and Lawrence and I do love and the fact that, and yeah. Watson. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they all got one in on him. I mean, yeah. Everybody talks about. Uh, Freddie Stewart as the best guy in the high ball uh, in the world now. I mean, this is uh, you know the common thing which is said. I am actually not convinced. I think he's very good under 80% of high balls, but I do think he does miss a fair few. Nobody mentioned um, Halfpenny, who has been doing this now for 14 years. What a brave guy. Uh, mm. uh, Christ almighty. Because the kicks from England, when they were put up on him, were exactly... We've meant all, th- all of the back three absolutely smashed half penny into next week and he got up every time just every bounced time back up and the one time he makes Didn't a mistake he's I mean, maybe he's expecting to be maybe he felt uncomfortable not getting smashed but um <laughs> yeah too much time yeah, too much time <laughs> so i don't know what happened so uh, the other thing so there's, there's, there's a few things so the, the quality was low there was a lot of kicking 
And I think your point on Steve Borthwick is absolutely a pertinent one. I, I, this is what frustrates me about England fans a little bit, is they moaned about Eddie Jones. Yep. I'm not saying there wasn't reason to. Had to go. Yeah, and I yeah. came round, and we, you know, and I, I, yeah, I'm Phil more and, and I, more comfortable with. Yeah. The you caught up with where I was three years ago. Well yeah. done, guys. <laughs> five, yeah. five years ago, 2018, downfall. Yeah, downfall. Downfall. Told you. So they were, complained about Eddie Jones, and then were like, "Yeah, yeah, Steve Borthwick, brilliant." And then moan. You can't give a thumbs up to Steve Borthwick signing, and then moan that you have a team that are very set piece oriented and kick a lot. Because what do you want? That's yeah. what the man does. And not only that, like this is England, not the film. Um, like, <laughs> but th- this is how you want to play your game. Like the lineup is important because it sets standards for the rest of your game. There's no point in being like the best attacking team if you have no. Uh, uh, no, no line out and the line out is one of the few areas of the game you can control it's completely on you your movement your call you dictate the pace it's all on you if you can't hang your hat on the line out you can't hang your hat on anything at all that's why it's the sing- in my mind the single most important cornerstone of the entire game so it's good that England are getting their line out if they've got the best line out and the best drive of any international team which is completely possible with Steve Borthwick at the helm that is an amazing accomplishment. You can build everything from yeah, yeah. from a line out. Everything. Yeah. So Steve Borthwick is doing what Steve Borthwick did at Leicester. Yeah. Uh, and what he did at Leicester was right back to basics. Let's let's build the fundamentals. The, Three things: the line out, the scrums much better, line the wall is much better, defense. the defence is good, and then let's let's play a territory risk free territory game where we squeeze and pressure the opposition. And then once we've got all that, we can start building the layers of attack on top. Exactly. That's exactly what he did at Leicester. We're three games in, and we just beat Wales in Cardiff. Not a great Wales team, but we beat Wales in Cardiff. And I would, and not only that, we limited Wales to really an interception try. Yeah. Yeah. And we and and we've got a goal kicker who's not kicking well, and so that should have been honest. Realistically, that was a. That should have been a 20 to 25 point margin. And, you know, yeah, you, England left 10 points out and they gifted Wales seven. And also some of the interventions from Willis in particular, but also Ludlam on the ground were spectacular. Oh, and there's a Dombrant one as well. There's, there's a Dombrant, Dombrant one, one yeah. five metres out. Yeah, Ludlam, 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 oh, no, yeah. Ludlam, Ludlam and Dombrant both had one on yeah. their own line. But there was yeah. uh, what I really liked about that breakdown attack as well is if Wales didn't put enough numbers in, they were like Willis and they was all and Ludlam all over it. So Wales had to put loads of men in, and as a result, England's defence was like, "Yeah, we got this covered. N- not a problem. Easy. Easy. So I- I'm, I understand the frustration with it wasn't a great spectacle compared to the other games we've seen this weekend. I understand if you love the nuances of rugby and stuff, you you go, "Oh, I love the oh, look at that mall, and I love the, the look tactical. at the box, like look at the you know, you've got to appreciate things like the box kick in the chair. I mean, if you're not appreciating the things that Borthwick does, it's like building a house, but starting by purchasing scatter cushions, right? <laughs> the scatter cushions are the last thing that you buy. I, I quite like that analogy. What I will say, and, and just to... So, England did appear to... like They've got this thing, and it happened last week, so this is clearly by design. It's not... A, a lot of individual players in... Well, Owen Farrell is getting a load of crap because England are kicking a lot. Um, and they did it. They did it against Italy, and they, they did it again against Wales. Even when they had overlaps, they were still trying the little grubber kicks. Yeah, uh, and there's stuff like that the, when that yeah. gets a bit frustrating. The grubber kicks are different in my mind. But the, yeah, the grubber kicks. I think. And I think two weeks ago to today or yesterday it was very different in the grubber kicks. I think two weeks ago the grubber kicks was that was the overwhelming robotic strategy yeah. that they were trying to implement for whatever reason. I, I, yeah. I genuinely think it was a predetermined strategy for that game this this week they did it a couple of times and they did it at the wrong times the, the old Henry, woman, Henry Slade when they when he had an overlap yeah, yeah. and that was um, on Wales is 22 grub a kick it, yeah. it, that, he, they actually got Faz got af, asked about that in the post-match press conference and just said he, I didn't see it he said he didn't see that one or did, couldn't think of that one but he said there was a marked difference between the Italy grubber kicking and grubber kicking this week, which I would completely agree with. Mm. I think in the Italy game, I'd actually say it was the, probably their most selected kick type, and they they probably kicked thirty five times, so maybe fifteen or so this week, maybe two or three. Yeah, totally I, different. Those grubber kicks, yeah. Um, there's a time and a place from 
you know, it, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Every, everything has a trade off. Like sometimes you kick a lot in order to pass later. Um, I thought the the best example of tactical, like sort of short range tactical kicking today was actually Finn Russell, and I don't think if, yeah, if I was to pile on some criticism to Farrell, he doesn't do that as well as Finn Russell did today. Finn Russell was yeah, last for that. He went for one. Yeah. Uh, which he actually referenced himself in the, the post-match press conference and he overcooked it. It was on and he slightly overcooked it and kicked it out on the full. Am I being... Is this blind faith? But So I was there at the ground but I've watched the game since and I thought maybe I'll have a different perspective when I sit and I'll, I'll try and be really objective. So I don't know if I've got blind faith here a lot of people have oh, you know, Farrell's not here, he's rubbish, he's useless. Need, and, and I watched it at the time and thought, yeah, he's, he's controlling things, he's the man, he's, he, he's, he's bossing it, and I can see the attacking shape starting to come, it's a work in progress. And I watched it again on the telly and thought, yeah, Farrell, really good in defence, um, really tenacious, and I, I, thought he was, I thought he was good. I, I, I completely agree. I don't think he's kicking, great. His kicking off the tee was awful. His kicking off the tee was dreadful. 33% left, left 10 points out there. I think everything else was really good. He, he was England's second top tackler behind uh, Mario Toji. That's not good. Uh, I mean, that's not what I want him doing. Well, he's very good at it. Mm, well, I mean, Kelly Hayamona is very good at a, a, a crash ball. I mean, just because you're good at something, I mean, he needs to be good at the things he's good at. I mean, I think I'd rather him... I don't know. Uh, well, uh, either way. Um, I thought he was good. Not world-class. I don't think I would single him out for loads of criticism. I don't think I'd... Just, he was fine. Just fine. Him and Owen Williams look you know, basically similar in it, what they do. It's an odd one, isn't it? When you've got something like Marcus Smith sat on the bench, I don't know, it's the... It, it's like the new toy, isn't it? People are like, oh, no, I want that, that, that thing seems more exciting. I don't know. I, I think from what we can read into the fact that Marcus Smith got, what, 25 seconds on the pitch and touched the ball once, yeah. ran, to, to, just to run it into three Welshmen himself, um, I think we can read into that that whether you agree or disagree... Smith days are numbered, aren't they? Smith days are numbered, and it's it, he's he's holding that backup spot for George Ford. George Ford's going to... I think there is a huge amount of trust between Borthwick and Ford from the last days. He clearly rates, rates the man highly. I also think Borthwick is not... Uh, and a lot of people have, uh, have been saying that he's just... It's only because... <coughs> excuse me, because Farrell's captain, that he, he, he you know, he's, it's, that's why he's keeping him on. I, I think Borthwick is absolutely a guy that will say, sorry, Owen, you're not playing well enough. You're, you're benched, you're out. He, he has already been pretty ruthless. <sighs> it's so difficult, isn't it? Because this is like the classic England problem when they've got too many players. Do you stick or twist? So there's not many countries in the world who would just get rid of Owen Farrell because they couldn't afford to. They just mm. wouldn't do it. So you let well, him I- Ireland, for example, as you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, Ireland would never get rid of Owen Farrell. Um, well, they might do. I don't know. But look, there's, there's <laughs> If also they like- didn't have Sexton, they're never getting rid of okay, Owen Farrell. Okay, here you go. South Africa are not getting rid of Owen Farrell. If Owen Farrell no would way. be yeah. South Africa's almost like dream fly half, yeah, uh, yeah, actually. And whether he played badly or poorly, it wouldn't matter. Uh, Elton Yanchis is not get, get, getting that shirt any time soon. Mornay Stain, 100 year old Mornay Stain, nope. is not coming back if Owen Farrell is playing yeah. for South Africa. So he gets to play his way out, 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 out of this situation. And also, you know, I know he's a captain. I know you're going to tell me I'm mad. He has not played very much 10 for England. He just hasn't. He, he hasn't. So he's not he has, that much. He's got some adjustment to make. I, I'm not a natural Owen Farrell defender. I just don't think he was that bad. Yeah, he really wasn't Which that is, bad. Which you know, is, as far as I'll ever go. <laughs> as, as far as I'll go. He wasn't that bad. That, that's high praise. As yeah, far as that I is incredible. Uh, as, as for things that were good, uh, I think there were lots of positive. Lewis Ludlam. Yeah. Matt, Lewis Ludlam great. Talk about taking an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. He, this, he's very... He's, very difficult to displace because he, he's been played so well. I actually thought as well. I thought Dombrand. Had, yeah, was I agree. Excellent in the first mm, half. I agree. I thought uh, maybe towards the end. So the one thing he does need to work on is his, is his conditioning. But he, uh, his defense was good. He was making intelligent lines. His breakdown work, which Pass. he got wonderful tur- bit of turnover. Yeah, he just good. He had a really good game. Uh, Van Portfleet as well. I thought his. Kicking his selection yeah. range and execution of kicking compared to Thomas Williams was much better. Just on the scrum half situation, I agree with you. His uh, Jack Van Portfleet's kicking was good, 
Did you not feel a massive difference when Alex Mitchell came on, though? Because Alex Mitchell fast. is... He wants oh, to go fast. The yeah. tempo... The, yeah. And, and uh, again, it, you get a different perspective when you watch it. You can see the whole pitch. and Because I've, I've been bigging up Alex Mitchell, I was just watching him for a bit when he was on. And building up to the, the uh, Lawrence try, just watch him glide... He covers some ground so fast, but it's the it's the speed at which he arrives at the ruck, and it's like it's gone before. Like, oh, yeah. How I'm did huge, you do that? Huge Mitchell fan. Yeah, it same. reminds me a little bit. Like so, so today um, in the Sale Exeter game, you had Gus War playing, who I think is playing brilliantly. Mm. But then Rafi Quirk comes on, and it just speeds up again. Like it's just an extra. I mean, maybe that's because maybe if you swap him around, maybe you'd tell Mitchell, look, go on, control the game. Win yeah. it. At the end, we'll get Van Portfleet on. Maybe you'd be seeing the same same yeah, thing. Yeah, I do. I was going to make that exact point because yeah. I do wonder because Van Portfleet can play fast. Mm. He, he's a fast player, but he England were a bit more purposeful for the majority of the game. But like Mitchell, he has so much guile. That's what that's what that's what I I love about him. He has intent. He has guile. I like the fact he, 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 just to look at you. Go, no, you're pick yeah. the pro, pick the pro rugby player out of this lineup. You're not um, you're not picking Alex Mitchell. Yeah, the Gary Neville lookalike <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a wonky nose. Yeah. Is I think Gary Neville's away? probably more stacked than Alex Mitchell. <laughs> Maybe. These are retired ex-pros are absolutely stacked now. <laughs> I love Alex Mitchell. Uh, yeah. But quality, that's, a good, that's a good point. And as long as he's getting good game time, like he came on after, what, 55 minutes. Uh, this Ooh. might be like one of the key differences between the Borthwick era and the Jones era. So Jones could never get to grips with, with scrum half. So no matter how hard he tried, he just couldn't do it. He had one scrum half for his entire tenure. He didn't know how to handle care. Didn't know how to handle Spencer. Spencer. He didn't know well Owen Farrell. That was, uh, <laughs> we, all we all know. Will Chudley got into an England squad once. Yeah, who I really rate. At, yeah. actually. But like, but he's just a good. He's like a Gus War. Yeah. He's a good, dependable scrum half. He but doesn't quite have the X factor already. He had both. The, he had a Maunder in there at one point. Yes, yeah. yes, he did. He Townsend was in there at one point. I think so. Yeah. So, so already, I feel that England are further along the line with Borthwick than they ever were. With uh, yep. Jones at halfback, yeah, that, Robs- that, that's Robson, was, Robson was in there. At Robson, one point. yeah. Randall was in there at one point. Yeah, right. Oh my word! I mean, how does he not get this? So you feel that Van Port- Portfleet's number one. It looks like you've got a solid number two now in uh, Mitchell, Mitchell, which is great. And then Rafi can come in and put some pressure on both of them. Sorted. How hard was that? Yeah. Wasn't even difficult. Not like they've got the talent. Like, it's not like the talent's not been there. That that is one of Jones's biggest failings. Just. Ben Young's almost like an in, an <laughs> Ben Young's is a good player, but to have the longevity and to prevent the the amount of talent who've been prevented from getting caps. Yeah, it's almost like he combined all the best, all the worst bits have been decisive. Ben <laughs> Young's with all the worst bits have been indecisive. All all the other people, <laughs> all, like, the things you, be... all the things you were pontificating yeah. about where, about Sexton potentially being in Ireland as might have pre- uh, pre- prevented you you can actually legitimately apply to. Ben Young's jo- Jones's look. use of Ben Young. Yeah, look, there's one there. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's how it works. Yeah. So, uh, just on the Welsh side, yes. Thought it was a fascinating selection for Owen, Owen Williams. I, I, Gatland's selections have been utterly fascinating. And do you know what I think he's doing? He's making sure that these guys definitely can't play. <laughs> well, I think he's Seriously, doing. Uh, right. Well, I, I, I think like I laugh. I think you're, you're probably part right. I think he's doing a or trying to do a mini version of what Borthwick did yep. in his first season. Completely agree. Test all of the toys, find out which ones work, which ones don't work. And it might be that all of his old toys, all the guys he trusted for a long time, or ninety percent of them, they all they're all still the best. They're all still the Johnny Sexton of the the Welsh team, and they get selected. But some of them, some of the new guys, I I, I like Hawkins, for example. I like Jack Morgan. I know he wasn't playing. This week, I love Chris Tzunza. Um Some of them will make it, but I think he's put... The combinations are just too random and inconsistent for, mm. it, for it to be anything other than we've got to shake it up to test everyone in different combinations and I'll find my best team by, by yeah. p- potentially not winning a game in the Six Nations. I think Hawkins and Grady, uh, I think they're probably international quality players. I, I'm, I was delighted to watch them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, whether they are going to be, the guy, I mean, I still do think that uh, Tompkins is probably the boy for me. I, I actually th- didn't think that uh, Owen Williams did so badly. No, it, he didn't. It d- didn't seem like a massive downgrade from Dan, Dan Bigger, but it's Ainscombe's shirt when he's back, isn't it? <sighs> Who knows? I, 
you know, it's been Ainscombe's shirt for 10 years now or whatever it is, eight years, whenever he showed up. He's never actually made it his. And when he has, yeah. he's then immediately got, got injured. I, bad, was, bad I still injuries. love Dan Bigger, but he was, he was bad against Scotland. But yeah. yeah. And he wasn't great when he came on. As for yeah. Chris Chisunda, all the, Chinza. 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 Right. All the talent in the world. All the talent in the world. He makes a lot of mistakes, though. He does. A lot of... He reminds me He's of... He's still so young. Yeah. Well, this is it, isn't it? It's about, as I've said in, in previous podcasts about the international game, they pick players based on what they think they're going to be. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, look how good he is now. Well, imagine what he's going to be like in six months' time. He might be exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. So he might need, get worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he drops the ball a lot. He sort of makes a lot of mistakes. He's very good when he has the ball in, in, in hand. And I think I do think he'll be a quality, quality operator. But just don't get too carried away with him winning the World Cup just yet because <laughs> I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, this World Cup's a tough ask. Yeah, it is. I, but a very, I, very good player. I think the criticism that a lot of people level at Borthwick Farrell that he's Farrell's only in because he's captain, I think can start to be levelled at Ken Owens, who I really like, but I think they've got better hookers. Well, yeah. I think some of those guys, in the first half, I thought Alan Wynne jones actually was decent in the second half, but in the first half I looked at him a couple of times and thought, I felt a little bit sad. It's like, oh, you're, you're like 157 caps. You're an absolute legend, a warrior. And it just looked like he was trying really hard, but couldn't couldn't do it. Couldn't get, well, there's nothing worse than when they get really physically manhandled. And Alan Wynne jones I can't remember which uh, intervention it was, but... I think that might got, be the one I saw. He got one, there was one carry where... That was, that it was, was, Sin- was it. It might have been Sinclair and Itoji. It was like, Sinclair and Genge. It wasn't Genge, it was Sinclair. It might have been Ludlam. He just got overpowered. He just he ran in quite upright to two boys who were lower than him and wanted to dominate him, and they did. Mm. But that's what happened. There could have been anyone. Could yeah. have been anyone. I, I didn't. I didn't think. No, Adam he was Jones fine. Had, had too bad a game. Him and Tipperick in the second half got some big turnovers. Yeah, 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 I think I think you're right about the the Gatlin thing. I would that that was I'm I'm that's made me more positive about Wales. The, the thought think, the, honestly, the thought there might be some strategy in it because yeah. there's an element of me thinking, oh my god, is Gatlin just going? I don't know what to do. I I genuinely think by the World Cup Wales will, will be fine. Yeah, it sounds mad. I'm, I really think they'll be fine. I'm with it. So after the second week when the selection was so zany and they played so badly, I was like. These guys have not got like Gatland has lost it, lost, lost his mind. Now I can see the madness. I can, I really think he is shaking it up. He's breaking the eggs because he's got to make an omelet of the World Cup. He's not focusing on the, the Six Nations. Is he, he's got to throw it out the door yeah. to have any chance of um, doing anything at the World Cup? That's interesting. Whether they will or not is another matter, but that that to me is his focus. I was trying to j- jump in on some uh, emails. Emails. Um, Martin Lewis here. Are the W uh, the the subject of this is uh, are the WRU aware of the consequences of their actions? No, no, the strike hasn't fixed it. If you read this out, you may need to edit it in brackets. <laughs> All right, thank you. Right. I've got a question for the pod. Uh, do you think the WRU realizes that results like Wales are getting in the Six Nations are going to become the norm if they continue to starve the pro teams who supply them? Smaller squad of around thirty-five players are not viable and a dangerous even for player safety. For reference, without including injuries, Ospreys have 15 players in the senior Welsh side and eight in the under-20s. That's going to mean unfulfilled fixtures. Uh, that is a good point, because some pro like Gloucester probably don't operate with many more than 35, Yeah, but they don't lose 15 to the international squads. Yeah, he goes on and says, I'm, I'm jumping ahead um, in the email, he says, the deal being offered to the four pro sides is, in, in Martin's opinion, blatantly aimed at killing them, or at least one of them off, in the hopes that the union gain more control. I, for one, uh, if they kill the Ospreys, for example, would be done with Welsh rugby. If the WRU does succeed, I personally hope it's followed by legal action against them for the damage they inflict on a private business Mm -hmm. from other URC shareholders and for the damage to the league. We can rejoice in the sight of the WRU gravy train going over a cliff Mm. with the self-serving... That's that's a bit I'm going to uh, edit out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, there was a resolution enough to get the game on, but it is still a, a snake pit and a mess. And I have some sympathy with this, the suggestion that the well, let's just put it like this: the WRU wouldn't be against the regions having to come to them cap in hand and hand over control. Yes, I think that's there's an element of that. I, mean, I listened to. Tom Shanklin on 
one of the other podcasts, which I can't one remember. Of the grassroots one of the grassroots pods. One of the grassroots podcasts. One of the, one of the Johnny Come Lately that's pods. That's it. It was some, some enthusiasts that wrote, that wrote for the Times. Do a, they do a little podcast, right? <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, it, that's is, nice. it, it is cute. They, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice little... Um, they, they do it 52 weeks a year, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a really nice sort of like hobby podcast, which they do, yeah, do, yeah, do, yeah. do over there. Bless them. Good. And Tom Shankin uh, was on, and he spoke really, really well about... Because, of course, he is still... Uh, involved with Welsh rugby, he lives down, down, down that way, very keyed in. And something just doesn't make sense to me about this whole situation that the WRU finds itself in. So, on the one hand, everyone's saying that there's not enough money in Welsh rugby to support it. On the other hand, and this is a point I think you would make, Tim, and Shankin made it, and I completely agree with it, one of the reasons that the players were pressured to play this game was because it's not just a rugby game. But people's livelihoods depend on it. Yep. You know, the work at the stadium, the mm-hmm. bars, the restaurants. It's one of the biggest weekends, if not the biggest weekend. The play, every the, two years, the players care about the fans. Yeah, yeah. Well. So, like, every them. two years, England comes to town. It is the biggest, probably the biggest weekend once every two years, right? Yeah. The the champagne and oyster bars. They're waiting for the spirit of cocker to pull up. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly <laughs> right. Dock, people, dock in Cardiff Bay. Yeah. yeah. On it. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so how is it that? The WRU cannot generate enough money, bearing in mind there's that kind of appetite in Wales for rugby. And I can't really make those those two those two things balance. And he was saying something along the lines of one of the options for the WRU is just to find more money. I'm thinking, is this when rugby has its sort and I think this applies to the RFU as well. Is this when rugby has its madman moment? I don't know if you know the scene where um in the series Mad Men they sack off the tobacco advertising and they just go their own way. Do, mm. do, do you know the bit that I mean? They sort of reinvent themselves. I've seen Mad Men, but I can't, I can't really recall that bit. But go on, I, I know the principle. Well, great the fan, show. So, great show. So, yeah, it is a great show. The fans know why they love rugby. Mm-hmm. The businesses know that the fans love rugby. They, you know, they all appreciate the values of rugby. But what is it the WRU are selling to, to the sponsors? Because... If they can't raise enough money from the current sponsors, maybe they just need new sponsors. Maybe they need, need new commercial arrangements. And my feeling is that the WRU and the RFU are mismanaging the game because they continue to pander to these existing sponsors by promoting a game that just simply doesn't exist. There is a game that exists, and it's phenomenally popular. So why can't you make any money out of it? And the only thing I can think of is, well, it's all like... Um, sponsor capture ship, oh, sorry, sponsorship capture, where they 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 just don't have a, a a a coherent message. If everyone is relying on these players playing a game, yet they can't get paid a decent salary with a decent contract, there is something fundamentally wrong, and someone needs to you know, get get hold of this. And I can't quite I'm not doing a good job of articulating it, but it's certainly not through the current commercial arrangements that. That they have. <clears throat> well, I, I think, we, and we don't need to go down this rabbit hole particularly, but I think you, I think I can agree with you 100% on the point that rugby's got a great product with fantastic values which resonate with individuals who come and support it, either watching it or physically come along in their millions, and that is completely not matched in the way that the game is trying to broadcast what it is it there's a like- massive disconnect there's a the, the venn diagram of who actually cares about rugby and who the who the people administrating rugby are trying to tell sponsors <laughs> that are really into rugby are just there's an overlap but it's not a it tiny. should it should yeah. be a, a complete overlap <laughs> and so for example a great example is um ufc yeah it is yes it ufc is, is holly davidson is <laughs> a completely unashamed of itself completely embraces and loves the people that love it and as a result they go out and find a, and, there's, and there's a great match with sponsors and they that you they can't move I like look at the look at the fighters shorts you can't move for sponsors yeah. everywhere and like you say because they know who it, their audience it's, it's is Harley, they know what their values it's are it's Harley Davidson it's yeah. uh, well here's, here's one for you right it's male why, male brands yeah why is why are there no energy drinks like you know or Protein powders or things that actually you know, you've got the audience here. Why are you? Why, why are these not the? Why is it Dove? Why is it? 
I just well, don't get it. Well, I mean, D- Dove does have male focused yeah, it's stuff, mm-hmm. but so, but I, I, in the but, you're, you're absolutely right in what you say. In that it's because rugby is trying to say we are we are inclusive, we're for everyone, and w- when you see a poster promoting rugby, you'll see you'll see um, a, a woman and a man and a child and <laughs> all sorts of background. Well, that, and, and that's fine and that's great. And I want all of the, I want everybody to come and enjoy rugby, and I think yeah. everyone should. <laughs> but let's just be honest. Rugby is a like overwhelmingly male pursuit, yeah. Well, at, at, as a as a participation and 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 significantly skewed male in terms of spectators. I just can't remember really, and that's, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. No, uh, and so I can't really remember when I saw the last advertising campaign, which describes the male players as brave or heroic, or any of these things. You see it with the ladies' teams all the time, or an inspiration. Like when you see the adverts on sort of um, Guinness used to. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, the adverts for Dove are things like "What a great father he is." That's superb. Can he hold up a scrum? You know, <laughs> I don't care how nice he. Is. We're all nice to our kids, right? You, you've got. We ca- we you've got a bit all... of time. We've got Courtney Laws as the face of our brand. We got. What, what, what do you want to? Can we? Can we get him throwing his kid into the? Or, or can we get him folding Jules, Jules police on in half? Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> I want him because he's a destroyer of worlds. Yeah, I'm sure he can cook a lasagna. <laughs> Absolutely positive that that is a thing that that, that that you can do. But I want him catching lineouts. So, I, I, do, do, oh, this is a separate and aside, right? <laughs> we have to talk about this. Has anybody noticed the adverts in the Six Nations? For a pa- well, a spe- I, I was disappointed there was no cocaine bear advert this week. Oh, well, <laughs> how about sanitary towels for men? Oh, ten of ten of men, ten of men, right? This is like, like, is this what it's is, is this what it's come well, down to? Now? The, sp- the sponsor of that podcast, which you mentioned, it, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's where I've heard it. I was like, Jesus Christ, let's break the taboo together. No, let's not break that taboo. Break that taboo with your doctor, not some, with your mates Some taboos are oh, taboos mate, for a reason. <laughs> I have, uh, well, do you know what? I'm not ashamed to say that uh, I've I've been driving home and been absolutely desperate. And you know that thing? It's like um, the closer you get to the yes. service station. When, you're, when, the, when, when the key turns in the door... You're desperate to go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I had it at a service station at the weekend. And the closer you get, you're like 10 miles to the service station. Oh, God, God, God. hold on, hold on, hold on. The closer you get, the worse it gets. Yeah, yeah. It's psychological. And to the point when actually you're going to do your business, you I, love the- I'm, I probably needed a 10 a man. <laughs> I, love, I, I love the idea, right, that the advertising company for 10 a man is like, okay, uh, boys, I'll see you at the pub at like 8, uh, 8 p.m. I show up at 8 p.m. with my tenner. And I'm like, yeah, shall we break this taboo together? No, we shall not. We will absolutely not break this taboo in any way well, that's at the all. Thing. That's the thing. There's nothing There's nothing to feel ashamed about if you... Wet yourself. If, and there kind of is. Well, I mean, there uh, kind of is, isn't there? There well, kind of is. Yeah, but like with, 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 I know anyone, your wives, will, oh, I'm sure, would say the same. Like a lot of a lot of women, after they have children, wear a pad because when you jump up and down or you go and Great. do an exercise... Or I don't run, need to know. Tell yeah, him, doctor. No, no, that's the point. That's the point. There's nothing, there's nothing to feel ashamed about, but it's not something you, you have a conversation about. Yeah, yes, yes, I think that's... That, that's the bit. distinction you can draw. Yeah. I'm not going to judge you or care if you're wearing a tenor man. I don't mind. That's no, absolutely no, fine. No, no, but, I don't, but I don't need to know about it. Although, would I not? Would, would I not? I mean, if I found out... I mean, there might be some gentle mocking go, go, going on. I mean, that, that's how men work oh, anyway, yeah, isn't I, it? I, and I wouldn't mind if there was a bit of gentle mo- mocking. Gentle, right. and then maybe some savage mocking. It doesn't re- really matter. If I, All I'm saying is... Break if, the taboo together. If, if, I, if I have a long drive and I'm wearing beige chinos, I might pop a tenor <laughs> man in... <laughs> If I'm wearing dark, well, je- if I'm know, wearing dark I, jeans, I'm I just dealing with it. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I used to be on the M1 with an empty bottle of Volvic, but not anymore. I, I used to use three or four of these ten men and fling them out the window. I, this is not a. Uh, this is this isn't a brag. It's just a practical thing. Those old Lucasade bottles were brilliant for that with the oh, wide neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the extra wide neck. Yeah, yeah. I, I see. Yeah. There's, there's like a there's a gas displacement thing with a smaller neck. <laughs> You what? There's a gas displacement thing. Talk to me. What's the, what, what? If you've got a, if if there's a a seal on the top of the bottle and mm. you're trying to fill it full of a liquid, <laughs> there needs to be like if you're nicking a bottle of wine with a straw, for example, you need you need gas to replace the volume that are is you, being lost. So hang on, are, are you talking effectively? 
So if tenor want to pay me for this idea, yes. maybe it should be uh, making tenor straws, which <laughs> you slip down, down the side of your bottle so when you can you're driving back. So you any bottle usable. Yeah, exactly right. I think it's better for the environment. No matter how paper. narrow pa- the bottle. Paper straws. Paper, environmental- tenor pa- pa- paper straws. <laughs> no, it's got to be bendable. Yeah. Yeah, but paper straws are yeah. terrible. Let's, uh, let's, let's break this taboo together, boys. <laughs> Right, so I've got a list. I've got uh, Come on, then, the RFU's official partners here. Yeah, go Anyone on. want to guess any of the names? Land Rover. Land Rover's a great one. Land Rover, not on the list. There is a, there is oh, a car um, brand. Z- Azuzu or something? Jaguar. That, that's their W-R-U. Uh, not Jaguar. Oh, sorry, is it R-U? Oh, no, Jaguar, is, Jaguar, is, Jaguar is Land Rover. What this, we're talking about. Okay, um, yeah. so the oh, so a car brand yeah, in England. Do, yeah, they're England. They are officially the <laughs> official performance partner which is confusing. A car brand, performance partner, England. It used to be Mitsubishi, but obviously they don't even trade in the UK now, so it's not them. Do they not? No, they don't sell anything in the UK. Wow. Um, I don't know. Who are the performance partner? It's Honda. I would official... never have got that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have got that either, and I like both England rugby and cars, and I wouldn't have got yeah. that. Okay, anyone else want to get any, anything else, else on the list? Um, so something like Charles Tierwitt. Yes, Correct. well done. Good well shout. done. They are the me- official men's formal wear partner. Um, who else is there? Uh, a, a cosmetic. Oh, BA. BA are a big partner. B- good shout. They are the official airline partner. The official airline. What about like? Uh, so There's a, a couple of watch, easy ones. A watch brand. There is not Tudor. No. Oh, there's not a watch brand on this list. All oh. have, this is RFU official partners. Is St. James's Place a partner? Oh, O2, obviously. O2, correct. Lead St. partner of England Rugby, O2. St. There's James- got to be a couple of investment places. St. James's Place or Investec? Neither of those things. Wow. No Quilter or anything like that. Quilter's a great one. No. no. There is an official insurance partner. Gallagher? No. Oh, is it the... I see... Um... People, people oh yeah, no, we, we've had we've had adverts on the, see, on the podcast. Um, could, we, no, we, we did have their official. I think we've had their official the, legal partner. Their legal partner advertised yes. with us. I, I did the read for it, and I can't remember. Yeah. It might even have been at the start of this podcast. You might have listen, just listen to it. <laughs> yeah, you're shouting out. Oh, of man. course, it. Oh, is it. I can't remember. I can't remember. Of course, it's Irwin Mitchell. Irwin Mitchell, Irwin Mitchell, Mitchell yeah. official right. Which a lot, people, a lot of people did point out, by the way, that the the read which uh, was on the podcast quite a while ago. Uh, a very similar copy was used on the TV advert. They obviously quite, was liked, it really? they obviously quite liked our read. Interesting. Well, they, yep. they, could have, yeah. they could have paid us a bit more money and we could have done that for them as well. I mean, I'll, I'll do copywriting for them if you want. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> I'll right. be. I'll be... Uh, Egg Chasers podcast can be official copywriters of England rugby. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so other ones, uh, easy ones. Official technical kit partner is... Umbro. Umbro. Their official beer partner... Guinness. Guinness. Uh, their official pe- <laughs> the official pizza of England rugby. Domino's. No. Really? The other one. Uh, Papa John's. Papa John's. So, uh, mm. Haskell, Alex Payne and Tyndall were all working for Domino's. There's a clear uh, sort of battle going on there between Papa John's and Domino's for rugby supremacy. Absolutely. Uh, official energy drink partner? LucasAid. No. They like sponsoring... Gatorade? Other... Um, like extreme activities. Oh, Red Bull. Red Bull. Uh, did we do the official insurance partner? You didn't tell us who it was. Investec. No, no, that's Investec. They, do, not they like rugby though. Oh, Allianz. Allianz. Uh, official male grooming partner. Nivea. No, the other one. Dove. Dove. Correct. Um, that's a bit boring. <laughs> official ball and training equipment supplier. Gilbert. Gilbert. Correct. Official supplier of scrum machines. Rhino. Rhino. Correct. Uh, That's proper niche, that. Official sports footwear supplier. Adidas. Correct. Official champagne partner. Uh, Paul Roger. Paul Roger. No, they are the official champagne partner of Bollinger. Bath, I believe. Bollinger. Ah. Bottle of Bolly. Oh, there's yeah. a Bollinger tent at Twickenham in the West Car Park. Yes. yes. Uh, and then a few others. We've got Simply Health, official health partner. I feel like I should read everyone's on this list. No, don't. They've all paid. no, no, no. If, 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 if they want some more airtime with us, they pay us. Okay. So, no. CBRE and Positive Energy. CBRE, if you want, that's the one. I you think. can definitely, definitely pay us. Yeah. Um, I've lost my train of thought on that now. But that's fine. We're talking about Wales. There are, uh, there's a plan with Gatland and. I, well, yeah, I, hopefully. It's either total madness 
or there is actually a plan. There's always a plan with Gatland. Yeah, always I, I fall on the plan side of it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Who watched France versus Scotland then? Who did didn't? I? Who didn't? Wow. Good game. I loved it. I absolutely great. It was three, three oh, great games sorry, this weekend. Just, great just, entertaining games. Uh, I'm, I'm just very briefly before we cover this off, because I, I think we kind of mentioned it, but just in case we didn't, uh, Christopher Egan is one of a bunch of emails. Contact chases at gmail.com. And he just he just says, uh, "Hi guys, pod love blah. Uh, what was the point of bringing Henry Arundel and Marcus Smith on for fifteen seconds?" Well, I thought it might be money, but it's not, is it? It's not money. No. They they do get a cap, which the otherwise cap, they wouldn't have. They get the, they, cap. They get the cash anyway. Um, I mean, in Wales, actually, that could be a very valuable appearance because you need twenty five caps in order to go to <laughs> yeah. France. Yeah, yeah. So there is, I guess, yeah. there's some logic to it. I mean, it's uh, it, it was. I mean, that was silly, it's neither it? here nor there at the end. I mean, they they did one, so they did need a third try. Um, it was only after seventy five minutes that the game was probably secure because that put England ten points ahead. So before then, it was an unsecure game. So it was more of an arm wrestle. But he really should have done it with four minutes to go, not fourteen seconds to go. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it was a. A, b- a bit of an odd one. Um, although, yeah. well, I'll tell you what was odd, was the, the the tape on Henry Arundel's neck. Yeah, why was that? He which, must have had a real well, neck strain. Well, the, he must have had a neck strain. He must have had contact with his neck somehow. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. Uh, illegal neck contact. So he had some tape on when he came on the pitch for his 15-second outing. And then there were some photos in the dressing room with him with uh, Kate Middleton. Uh, oh, Kate Middleton did it. And the tape was off. And there's there's some interesting mark on Henry Arundel's neck, which he was clearly covering up. Now, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and su- suggest that that was... What's that little um, skin thing that can be... Uh, like a scrumpox type injury. A scrumpox type injury, whatever that would be. So, Is like, he, maybe he's flanking. In, in Patigo or something, which can be... He's got a cut that's maybe got a bit infected and... Yeah. Yes. I mean, alternatively, he... Uh, Pos- no, I can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> Alternatively, he's got, got a very affectionate girlfriend. Yeah. Or, or boyfriend. boyfriend. Whatever, I don't know. Maybe he's celebrating a try friend. with um, Paddy Jackson. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was quite... In- so watch this space on the Henry Arundel tape watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he has that next train next week or the week after. Yeah. The week after, yeah. Or where else he has a tape. <laughs> <laughs> Moving around his body. <laughs> oh, the other thing we didn't mention, speaking of that, is I loved Freddie Stewart. Uh, running with his ass out, and whilst oh running, yeah, trying to get it. whilst running, trying to pull his shorts yeah, up. Yeah, but he, he tried. He went for a quick grab, and then he was like, "No, I'm not going to get this." No, so oh, I'm just, yeah. I'm I'll just, just remember carry on. I'm on a I'm on an international rugby pitch. Yeah, so um, there is some logic to that because it'd be awful if they came any further because you trip over. Mm. So you need to get them back up asap. Yeah, but yes. it's, it's amazing how fast in, like elite athletes' brains work because in that split second he processed my shorts are down i need to pull them up oh look there's a welsh player i need to keep away from him let me change the side my hands is let me pull my short <laughs> yeah it's incredible talent indeed indeed they are the w- exceptional athletes actually the one thing that we've not mentioned the best thing about the game was the first try the anthony watson try. oh it was great it was lovely i think that, danny care said it was a quinn's move that nick nick evans <laughs> has pinched no 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 it's a nick evans move that, Qu- that Qu- quinn's use yeah nick evans move that quinn's use and now england use yeah that was lovely. It executed beautifully. The kind of crash up the middle, and then the quick ball, and then go wide, and the finish from Watson. Lovely, lovely try. It was it was it was Don Brandt as well who threw the pass. Yeah, the, the, the assisted yes. pass. Yeah, yes. the, yeah, that's you, what I was yeah. Referring to you referring to before. That was a lovely pass at pace. Right now, go. now let's do France. France. This was amazing. But this was utterly compelling game. Amazing. So in the NFL. Everything relies on the quarterback, doesn't it? Like, it, you know, if you don't have a quarterback, you're not winning anything. Mm-hmm. And I think Finn Russell is right up there with the best quarterbacks in the world as to you know how he controls this team. He is, he's just special. He, I, 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 I always thought he was special, but he's just special. He's just so much better, I think, than every other Northern Hemisphere fly half. They all do things in very adult ways, don't they? Like, you know, very sensible, very dour, very joyless automatons who kick and pass <laughs> as and when and occasionally they're told to play freely because a coach told them to play freely so they're not really free at all uh whereas finn russell is a complete natural i just love him i love him and every time 
you say stuff like that, I, I just it's worth reminding. We know about the two pints the night before the game that caused all those arguments a while back, and clearly Gregor Townsend has hates him. Well, no, I, well, I would say it's it's to Gregor Townsend's credit. I think he has actually, he has accepted the talent that is undeniable and has said, is- "Go on, then it's your team. Off you go." And that's great, and that's good for everyone. And, and rather than being critical of what he did in the past, I think we should credit him for changing the, the approach now. But I love the fact that I, I worked with someone who went to Glasgow University and played rugby there. And Finn Russell was a young young guy at Glasgow at the time and, and came down and helped out with a bit of coaching. His dad's in was quite high up in the Scottish Rugby mm, Union, wasn't he? And so yes. anyway, so um, Finn Russell came down to help coach. And um, this this guy from Glasgow University said he used to turn up. At coaching, and he have, he'd have a carrier Tesco carrier bag with two meal deals in it, <laughs> <laughs> and he'd nail them. And his his coaching extended to, right? What you want to do, lads, is just do this, <laughs> and he'd whip like a thirty <laughs> meter flat pass. Like, yeah, he is the worst person yeah. to coach. Yeah, we we can't do that. His, his yeah. brain, like, the English language, is not complex enough to yeah. uh, put it into words. Yeah, you need fifty words for pass, like Eskimos <laughs> for snow yeah. for, for Finn Russell to to convey what he's talking about and then so he would turn up with his tesco meal deal he'd do some worldy sort of skill uh, just to sort of think that other people can do what he can do and then he'd get on it with them on a wednesday night in the union and so Perfect. which is exactly why he was involved in the game is just so he could go out in, in the university on a wednesday night and i just love that that guy the two tesco meal deals the he'd, the going out on the on the piss um on, on a wednesday night and where was he educated finn russell is he a private school boy I have no idea. Don't I, know. I know nothing about I him. Know, I know nothing about him. I just know that he is. He breaks the mould, not just in how he plays the game. He breaks the mould as as a as a bloke in rugby full stop. And yeah. I love that about him. In terms of breaking the mould, just one little stat from this weekend that shows how different Finn Russell is to every single other fly half who played this weekend. So there's nine other players who played fly half this weekend. Finn Russell made more metres with ball in hand than all nine put together. Wow, that is an awesome stat. Did you just, did someone else crunch those numbers or did you? No, it's me just looking at it now. Oh, that's awesome. Like, Charlie Morgan will be nicking that. That's Hope a, so. That's, that's a Charlie Morgan level stat, that. I love it. That is quite incredible. So, point I was going to make about the private schools. That's awesome, Phil. I love that stat. Is the private schools produce a lot of players who not only look like rugby players, as in, like, technically they're very good because they get the technical, brilliant coaching, and they look like them because they've got squat racks and their arms are massive, and they basically all come, you know, like, like mini, mi, like mini, uh, mini duans. But they also, like, <laughs> teach them how to sound like professional rugby players. So it's very hard to sort of break into the world of professional rugby, particularly in England, unless you're England is... exceptionally talented, like, yeah. uh, like ungodly talented, in which case you've probably been picked up by a, a private school anyway. Anyway, and, you're offered a scholarship. Yeah, put into a sausage machine and come out the other side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He went to Wallace High School in Stirling. What, what is and, that? And on the Wikipedia page, it says uh, early, life. Oh, oh, early life and education. It said, uh, Russell started playing rugby at Wallace High School in Stirling. Russell did not feel drawn to academic work. After, after secondary school, he pursued an apprenticeship for three years as a stonemason in a business owned by a family friend whilst his rugby developed. I love I love Finn Russell. I love him. I love the man. Yeah, so, I love him. But, but this could actually... I mean, literally, this could be the reason he plays the way that he does. Because he's because not he's, been through that sausage machine. Yeah. 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 Do you know when, they're, you know when they talk about playing freely, but actually they're just repeating what someone else has said? <laughs> yeah, like, play freely. Do this, then this, then this, then yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't but, do but, that. For but, God's but, sakes, don't yeah. do that. <laughs> but play freely. Yeah. Remember yeah. to play freely, guys. Yeah. I, I, that, to me, I, Danny Cipriani what, did go to, to private school, but he's probably the closest thing I can think of to someone who plays freely. But not even he would do the sort no, of stuff that Finn Russell does. Definitely not. And so it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a grammar school, selective grammar school, but it's a state school. It's not, it's not fee-paying. So um, I, I, I love Finn Russell. Mm. I love and him. And back to the English language thing, I'm not entirely sure he could describe... Well, I don't know. So sometimes you look at these amazing once-in-a-generation players like Brian O'Driscoll. Mm-hmm. I think, is he good just because he's good and naturally talented, which undoubtedly is, or is he good because... Not only does he know it, he can explain it, he understands the game to a different level. And 
I think with Brando Driscoll, you know, I don't know if you saw the demonstration on BT Sport a few weeks ago, mm. but it's with so Jamie obvious. Roberts. Yeah, so like, he understands it to that sort of level. I wonder if Finn Russell could explain it to that level. Well, they or often, if it's just instinct. They often say that the best players don't make the best coaches simply yeah. because there is that gap between they know what to do, they can't always explain what to do. Yeah. Like someone like, it's an obvious example, but Shane Williams, for example, or Cheslin Colby, when they're running, do you think they could coach or explain what's going through their head at Gap every moment? Gap running into it very fast. Yeah, but it's so much more. But that, yeah. that's, that would be the limit of what they could explain, but it's so much more than that. Yeah, it do. could be anything. It could be like... And, you know, I look into the empty space and then I run into... You know, what, you know, it could be all sorts. Yeah, or like, just my brain takes over. I just want to get away. Like, I don't want to be hit. Like, I want to be in the space. And there also is a peculiar discipline to Finn Russell as well. And if you saw his saw some of his kicks today, I thought they were brilliant. So he's inviting French pressure, French line speed, onto his passing game. Now, if he was just truly reckless and not disciplined or coached to play a certain way... He would just carry on doing the same thing. He'd just carry on with his passing game because he's so good at it. But he invites pressure and then kicks directly to the corner. Mm. Uh, and then he'll start passing it. And it's the mix of kicking and passing yeah. uh, as well as just his willingness to, to, try, to try stuff. Uh, and I think it gives everyone around him so much more confidence. I just, I just want to correct myself because it, it, I was uh, Wallace High School that's a... Um, a a selective grammar is the one in Northern Ireland in mm. Lisbon. Uh, the one, the one, the one that Finn Russell went to is just a regular, a regular comp. There we go. Regular, yeah. regular eight, eleven to eighteen comp, stonemason apprenticeship, getting on the piss with students whilst he was a, a youngster at Glasgow. Good lad, ruling the world. Yeah, good lad. What a boy. Uh, so enough about Finn Russell because he yeah. was obviously brilliant. Um, he had a few, yeah, yeah, a few it, moments. If, if we were a Scotland fan and I was supporting Scotland in this game because I was like the underdog. Uh, I had my heart in my mouth, so if I was a Scottish fan, uh, yeah. God. He well, opera- he opera- he's great. either sublimely amazing or he can be... Finn Sanity. Yeah, Finn Sanity, yeah. Yeah, he just cranks it up to 11 yeah. in, in every dimension. Can you imagine right. just how frightening he is to play against? Oh, yeah. I mean, he just must be absolutely terrifying because he doesn't really conform to any sort of particular standard. I, I tell you who had a really impressive game in my mind. Is two Pilotu. Hugh Hewitt Pilotu, that pair are yeah. eggs, aren't they? And the reason, I mean, uh, Hugh Jones does what Hugh Jones does. He great really, some of his lines Amazing. so good. But two Pilotu just yeah. gave them a focal point. Oh, like, get totally. out of jail free card. Totally. Uh, it's not he's not a player that I've really ever noticed before. I've not really seen him play much domestic rugby, seen him in a couple of international games, thought, yeah, serviceable. But I thought he was excellent today. Really, yeah. really excellent. The pair of them the pair of them were brilliant. I think the two wingers were quiet though. Like yeah, they Duan were. particularly was kept very quiet. He didn't have his own way. Not uh, like uh, and France just it seemed like France had oh gone. Do you know what? Let's just attack down our left. <laughs> yeah, let's let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's go that, that way because <laughs> well, they they didn't they just do, everything went left with them. Mm. Yeah, well, I don't think I don't think France were nearly prepared enough for, for what for, for what hit them. And I think another thing which really threw well not everybody but what I thought would have played into Scotland's hands and indeed did play in Scotland's, Scotland's hands with the two red cards because I just thought they are far more they're, they're far more suited to instinctive rugby with the players that they have than the French are I think the French for all the Jouet Jouet stuff which are meant to be known for they're quite regimented now you know Gaultier yeah. is into pressure um, Edwards is a pretty structured coach so it's going to be much more difficult for them to play with, with seven men in the pack than Scotland who will relish that space Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, think you're probably right about that. Although, when uh, Gilchrist went off and it went to twelve uh, nil before, there was only like five minutes before the Hawass yeah. red card. Um, I was worried at that point. At twelve nil with a man down, you thought there is no way Scotland are coming like this an mountain. absolute rocket. They looked so they? good, didn't they? Nineteen nil because then it was the interception after that, so it went to nineteen nil. So Scotland had they have just. Well, have they only conceded nine points instead of the nineteen points? They could have <laughs> could yeah. have won this so, game. I mean, they, they they lost it in that first fifteen minutes, didn't they? One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Um, two red cards. Any issues with them? No. But. Yeah, I, I will never understand why the first red card is not two red cards. The, so first, the first one wasn't as in the because it was Ferguson. Ferguson hits him in the head. Was an upright. Actually, I saw that as shoulder to shoulder. Yellow card then. 
I, but it'll always be one player that shoulders all the blame. Excuse the pun. Uh, yes. Wasn't there one? Was there a Saracens Exeter one where two? Yes. Two. two uh, the, the the lift over the horizontal. Barrington. Was that the Barrington one? Was it? Yeah, it might have been Barrington and someone else, but it was a lift, you're, lift you're, over the horizontal. You're right. Generally, I do think Ferguson let the boys play Gilchrist. And France have got nothing to complain about because the, how they didn't get a yellow card for their infringements, I don't understand. The, I the referee gave them warnings a couple of times. So that, that's the way I would summarise this game for France. And I have massive respect and I love this about France. They were clinical in Scotland's 22 and they were cynical in their own 22. They mm, know yeah. when to give away penalties. They like, should, like the good teams apart that Apart from win, Hawass. Apart from Hawass, yeah. Uh, the, I did love the Hawass where he ref, walks over to him with a red card. Like It's been shown on the big screen... Ten times at this point, and he says, "C'est moi, <laughs> it's me, little old me." He's, yeah, but he's been there before, hasn't he? Three years ago, with that punch the to punch Jamie Ritchie, Ritchie, spread yeah. Jamie Ritchie's fa- uh, nose across his face. Um, yeah, but France like good teams that that like 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 Neil back uh, for Leicester, like Richie McCaw, like good, like the good teams that win tournaments. They know when to when to cheat. Yeah, um, I was very high on France. Uh, actually, I'm still pretty high on them because what they did manage to, to do, to, to all their credit, is stop the Scottish momentum. And that shouldn't be underplayed because 19 nil up, to lose that lead or to be on the verge of losing it, they were... Well, Xander Vegas and dropping the ball over the line. Did, did he? Yeah, yeah, he bounced it. Bounced it. Bounced oh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, for the yeah, line. Yeah. 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 So hey. the Finn Russell try, I'm like... They've got to win this. They've got to, uh, sport is all about momentum. So for France to stop that, I thought was actually really impressive. The other thing as well is France didn't have much of the ball, and my biggest worry for Scotland was when the French substitutes came on. So they've got this enormous set of forwards which are going to come onto the field and beat you up. And as long as Scotland can keep the ball and keep them running around and keep them second guessing and play with their nerves, I thought they'd be okay. But as soon as they lost that ball, it was very hard for them to. You know, get get it back and make any further impression. Mm. So that's that. Yeah, I think France they could have done better in the bits where they're letting Scotland just run all over them. But to keep Scotland out for that final ten minutes was actually very impressive. It was, and when when France play their best stuff as they did for the first twenty, they are ridiculous. They're yeah, because they get the they get the power game going, and then they start the offloading game, and then they spread it wide, and the three things together are just. They totally never got like, through phase one, though, did, did they? they did, f- that first try was was that. It was exactly yes. that. Um, then the last try was a bit of that as well. But yeah, they they often actually didn't need to. But then they didn't for periods of the game. Like, there was a 10-minute period before the Finn Russell try. And it popped up. Uh, territory in the last 10 minutes. France 2%, Scotland 98%. Yeah. So they just had nothing for that period. Uh, and that's that's where I think France are weak because for that period of time, Scotland they were happy to kick the ball, and this is what Ireland did to great effect two weeks ago. Just keep pinning France back, keep making their back three work. The back three are good, but they're not always positionally the best. And if you find grass and force them to exit, their exits aren't as good and as crisp as other nations. Mm. So just force them to exit over and over and over again. That's what England have got to do to them. And I actually think mm. perhaps the two game plans that England have played for both Italy and Wales, is it would they would work quite nicely if you just want to force France to exit all the time. Now, the one thing that you've got to be careful of with that is if you make France exit 100 times... 90% of them, they'll be like middle to lower middle That's exits. still 10 tries. 10, 10, to, <laughs> 10 out of the 100 will be yeah. worldy tries. Yeah. So that's a problem. Well, yeah, there is that. I, you, know, you mentioned game plans. The Baldwick game plan actually would work very well against France mm. if he continues you know, as 100%. he is. Yeah, yeah. Only got to wait two weeks to find out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's worth just reiterating Paul B in the Rugby World Cup. South Africa, Ireland, Scotland. South Africa. Some, someone's got, South Africa going through. Ireland's going through. Yeah, Scotland they're not. Um, Sorry. Just one thing on yeah. France. They're going to lose... Who, oh, I was going to say Arthur. Oh, that's the Claremont boy. 
Who was the who's the big back row who got concussed? Jalonch. Jalonch is done. So it's his crew shirt. Yeah, he's done. Oh, That's no. massive. Yeah. yeah. So he was playing exceptional to start with. Wow, because he was still stood on the side of the pitch. Oh, God, walking no. around. I thought it was a head knock. So yeah, head first, knock so he had a head knock, HIA came back on. Came back on. Now he did get another head knock when he was he tackled Duan with his head, which is normally not advisable, but yeah. he stopped a try. But as well as taking a second big knock on his head, uh, apparently his uh, crew shot's gone. Oh, God, that's well Because they were doing, on the sideline, they were doing his knee at that point. So Kroos was, was good, yeah, but he's not Jalonch. No, Jalonch has really come well, into they've his got, own. They've life. got Wokey um, maybe will be in the back row. Uh, well, he's, he's injured. He's isn't out he? for the tournament, isn't he? Is he out for the World Cup, though? No, no I don't no, mean. Sorry, I don't mean for England. Sorry. I mean for the World Cup. For the World Cup, he'll uh, be back for the World hopefully Cup. Hopefully, Jalonch will be back for the World Cup. But possibly. Oh, Crucia, no. I'm not sure. Crucia is. Best, not six months? Minimum six months. I, I yeah, know, best I, case scenario, six months. I don't know. I, I hear like Wolverine, so I. <laughs> well, it, it does. So you've got ACL and PCL. Well, Flamont and posterior. Flamont so has been. PCL, you can Flamont's play. has been good at second row. I, I would imagine Wokey on the blind side and Olive on at seven. Yeah, all this uh, Makalu who they like on the bench. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll have a few options. They'll be right. They'll be fine. They'll be okay. Now, interestingly, in the back row, did you notice who got taken off? Yeah, Aldr- Aldrich. They took off the world's best eight or one off. So Hamish Watson went off. Yeah, which that surprised. makes sense. We, uh, the bit that made didn't it's make his first sense. Game. Though. He's only played a so couple of games, hasn't he? Hamish, Hamish Watson, yes, but going losing a forward against France, I would have thought like take off Cal Stade. Oh, I see. Like it didn't it, like going down a man in the pack. Now, obviously, yeah, because they did that before Howass had been yeah, red carded. It, it was so it was they were going. No, we'll go seven against eight. Yeah, against France. Against France. That's a really good point. And they're, not... t- and they're twelve nil down. Yeah, like, what's what's going on, guys? Yeah, that's that a great seemed, shout. That seemed odd, but then it did get stacked. Uh, maybe they just read the script. Uh, well, they got Duan. Just France you, going back. Just go and pack down at, on at flank for scrums, which Fiku did. And Fiku's like one hundred and five kg, yeah. so Fiku can do that quite nicely. But yeah, yeah, taking Aldrich off was well, surprising. He got taken off after 50 minutes in the first two games. Hmm. He doesn't look as good as the player that was, you know, just yeah. awesome. And he's he's hardly had a break for La Rochelle. So yeah. the, like coming off after five, it's, it's, probably, it's probably the most uh, re- most rest he's had all season. So uh, who doesn't today. get any rest? Dupont does not. Dupont gets no rest. Yeah, and he's right in the middle of everything. I didn't think he was that good today. He he wasn't, but he's still in the middle of everything. Mm. He's like he's just involved in absolutely everything because he's their Finn Russell. He's their world class player. He's their general. He, well, no, run, he runs the show. Well, now him and Finn Russell would do together. Oh, now you're talking. Yeah, it'd be fascinating to, to watch that tap tackle that led to the Finn Russell insane offload. It doesn't matter what situation Finn Russell finds himself in. He wants to uh, do something incredible, with it, including being tap tackled to the floor. That was. Yes. One of the most stupid phases of play I've <laughs> ever so seen. Yeah. They just kept doing it, and everyone, everyone was, did it. it. Everyone was just uh, keep it alive, keep keep shoveling. Yeah, why are you doing that? Well, Finn did it. <laughs> <laughs> this this is why he's so roundly hated by Greg, Gregor Townsend. Gregor Townsend hates him. I tell you what, Gregor Townsend's uh, replacements were pretty smart. Smart today. I thought he played as uh, well. You got to remember, it's Finn's team. Gregor just admin, uh, just yeah, yeah. You know, is a supporting uh, cast member. Yeah. But he did play his cards fairly well. I thought his front row substitutions were spot on to bring on at that time. And actually, they were, that, that could have led, led to a try. Well, the, the scrum so battle, close. The scrum battle was really interesting because you were often uh, eight on the attacking team and seven on the defending team. Yeah. So you often matched up like the defensive team gave away. So it it meant for some really interesting scrum battles. Scotland have got a handful of excellent props. Mm. Now they've not got a very deep pool. And I don't think they do very much around the park, like say Schumann. S- yeah, doesn't you do a huge? Not a J, um, a WP Nell doesn't do. That's a massive amount around the park. But if you can hold up a scrum, yeah, like, yeah. You, you've just reminded me that what the one issue that England have, which I'm still not happy with, that the, the replacements coming off uh, front row replacements is just not yeah. good enough. Well, that's exactly the point I was going to make. So mm. the front row, I mean England's front row now are all singing, and all dancing, except for they neglect, neglect the one thing they need to do. Scrum. Yeah. 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 They can do well, the scrum else. was much better. Yeah, much better. The, the scrum has been better. You don't get these absolute monsters. I mean, Scotland have got the scrum animals in there, and the scrum will be tested in two weeks against France. Although perhaps not, perhaps not with both Uini Antonio and Hawass out. Uini Antonio is going to come back, is he not? Three week ban, wasn't it? Oh, of course. 
else. Unless it, they count the rest weeks, which they should be. You know, he'd be playing for... Uh, uh, who he plays for? La Rochelle. Yes, it is La Rochelle. He'd definitely be playing. Oh, yeah. 100%. All France could arrange a friendly. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. A game of three thirds, and each third counts as a game. Perfect. Miss, miss one week. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll find someone else. They'll, they'll be absolutely fine. Uh, uh, one thing that Tribe doesn't have that app that uh, Ultimate Rugby probably does uh, is the scores from the Rugby Europe Championship. Oh, please. I don't know. Oh. Oh, I, don't, so I don't have it. I don't know what's going I've not, on. I've not checked this week. Nope, uh, I did see that Nina Ashvili was playing for Lyon, though, the Georgian fullback. So was there a game this week? Maybe it was a rest week for them. Because they have a weird... Cause yeah. they, I think they... Europe... I never know what it's called. Nations Cup. Well, that would explain why uh, there's no scores on Tribe, because I'm sure Tribe would be across it. Uh, let's have a look. Fixtures results. Yeah, nothing this week. Oh, okay, That'll good. be why. Good. Good. Right. Um, I did watch a lot of other rugby, which is what we'll obviously go on to talk about in the domestic competition yes we will uh, competition um, podcast anything else to cover no Six Nations next weekend so anything else to cover any other no, business I'm ready I'm ready to talk about real rugby now <laughs> this is it's shaping up to be one of the great Six Nations championships um, so yeah can't wait bring it on two weeks time excellent uh, and in the meantime hit subscribe in that chat, in that feed wherever you're listening to your podcast email us contact at gmail.com support us at patreon.com slash and let the boys play let the boys play